Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today issued Edict 22 for the year 2020. Under the edict, the Director of Engineering and Investment Services at the Southern Governorate, Khalid Abdel Latif Haji, is to be transferred to the Northern Governorate holding the same title. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of France, Jean Yves Le Drian, at the headquarters of the Ministry of Europe and Foreign Affairs in Paris, with his official visit to France. During the meeting, the two ministers discussed aspects of bilateral relations between the two friendly countries and the means of promoting them in various fields, in addition to the developments of the political and security situation in the region and a number of topics and issues of common concern on the regional and international level. The Assistant Minister of Foreign Affairs, Abdullah Dosari, participated in an ordinary ministerial level Arab League meeting number 154, held electronically as deputized by the Foreign Minister Abdullah Rashid Zayani. The session was chaired by the Palestinian Foreign Affairs Minister and the President of the current session of the Arab League, Riyadh Al Maliki, and was attended by the Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abul Ghait. Adosari said that the Kingdom of Bahrain affirms the importance of cooperation with the international community to end the Palestinian-Israeli conflict as per the two-state solution to achieve a just and comprehensive peace which will lead to the creation of an independent and sovereign Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital as per the international law and the Arab Peace Initiative. In this light, Adosari congratulated the United Arab Emirates for its agreement with the United States and Israel in order to stop the annexation of Palestinian lands in a historic move that reduces tensions and enhances the chances of peace in the region. He said that the Arab world faces several dangers which require solidarity and cooperation for self-protection, sovereignty, independence, as well as the prosperity of its people. He identified terrorism as a leading threat which continues to operate thanks to the funding and support that it enjoys from countries in the region, which spreads extremist ideologies in peaceful societies. Adoris Suri also identified foreign meddling in the internal affairs of Arab countries as represented by Iran's threat to the stability and security of the region, which trains and funds terrorist organizations, including Hezbollah and the Houthis, that use ballistic missiles and remotely guided drones towards civilian areas in Saudi Arabia. He said that a firm Arab position against Iran's threats must be taken. Adoris Suri noted that Turkey's interventions in Arab affairs have become apparent and have increased in scope as it occupies Syrian territories and supports terrorist organizations which carries out assaults in Iraq and sends armed terrorists to Libya to threaten its sovereignty, which Adosari said also threatens Egypt. He called instead for a political solution to Libya. The Ministerial Council then issued a number of resolutions that affirmed the importance of the joint Arab action, among which was benefiting from the world of the King Hamad Center for Peaceful Coexistence and similar centers in the Arab world and called for fighting extremism. The Council denounced Iran and Hezbollah's ongoing interference in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia through supporting and training of terrorist elements and causing sectarian tensions to threaten the Kingdom's stability and security, all of which are contrary to UN treaties and international law. It affirmed its support for Bahrain's steps to counter terrorism and praised the work of its security forces as well as those of Saudi Arabia for foiling terrorist plots which are supported by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and Hezbollah. It welcomed the inclusion of those who belong to the members of Al-Ashtar brigades to the list of terrorists and supported Bahrain's bid to occupy various positions in international forums. The Council affirmed the centrality of the Palestinian issue and the Arab identity of occupied East Jerusalem and Palestine's sovereignty over all occupied land as well as peace as a strategic method to solve the conflict as per international law. The Council also discussed various matters including those of Libya, Syria, Yemen and others of Arab and international interests along with various topics that relate to human rights. Finally, the Council issued a statement of solidarity with Sudan as it deals with the floods and another statement in solidarity with Lebanon in the aftermath of the explosion. The and the Assistant Foreign Affairs Minister Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jabra Dosari participated in the 14th meeting of the Arab Ministerial Quartet Committee on the follow-up on the crisis with Iran held through video conferencing in the context of the ministerial level sessions of the Council of the Arab League. 
The committee discussed the developments of the Iranian crisis and the course of Arab relations with Iran, as well as the means to confront Iranian intervention in the internal affairs of Arab countries. The Assistant Foreign Minister affirmed the importance of the committee and the follow-up on the developments of the Iranian crisis, as well as Bahrain's supporting stance towards the committee. He noted that Bahrain will provide the General Secretariat with a report on the Iranian interventions in the internal affairs of the kingdom. The committee affirmed the Arab and international decisions denouncing the Iranian intervention in the internal affairs of Arab and regional countries, noting that progress in security and development in the region cannot be achieved without collective steps to confront the Iranian threat. The committee condemned Iran's support of terrorist acts in Arab countries and Hezbollah's unacceptable abuses against Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Yemen, which aim to incite sedition and hatred. The committee also affirmed its absolute rejection of any abuse of leaders and powers and symbols. The committee denounced the continuous Iranian intervention in the internal affairs of Bahrain and Iran's support of terrorism and inciting sedition. The committee also hailed the decision of a number of countries to list Al-Ashtar brigades in Bahrain as a terrorist organization. The Assistant Foreign Affairs Minister Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jabr al-Dosari participated in the first meeting of the Arab Ministerial Committee to follow up on Turkish intervention in the internal affairs of Arab countries. Held through video conferencing in the context of the meeting of ministerial level sessions of the Council of the Arab League. The Assistant Foreign Minister affirmed that Turkish intervention in the internal affairs of Arab countries is a direct threat to Arab and international security and peace. The meeting issued a statement in which the committee denounced all forms of Turkish intervention in the internal affairs of Arab countries, especially Iraq, Libya, Syria, as they are considered a grave violation of international law. The Ministry of Health's primary care called on all visitors to healthcare centers to adhere to the directives of not frequenting the centers except when necessary and to commit to coming to the health centers only 15 minutes before the appointment as well as to book appointments electronically or via the hotline instead of in person. The Ministry also called for the use of the Ask a Doctor service which offers remote counseling via video or telephone calls instead of going to the health centers. The Ask a Doctor service is used for answering basic medical inquiries, requesting a laboratory test, renewing prescriptions, and following up on laboratory results and x-rays. The aim of the service is to minimize contact for services that can be provided remotely. The ministry called on citizens to keep a distance of one and a half meters between each patient in visiting areas and waiting areas, and not to bring children or any individual that is not concerned with the appointment to the health care center. Primary care also emphasized the adherence to all health regulation inside and outside the health centers. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 5,426 with 245 recoveries, 672 new registered cases and three deaths. Of the new registered cases, 83 are expatriates, 588 are contacts of active cases and one is travel related. The deceased was a 57 year old male citizen, a 90 year old female citizen and an 83 year old female citizen. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules and avoid public spaces when possible. The chairwoman of the National Institute for Human Rights, Maria Khouri, participated in the 25th Asia-Pacific Conference, which was held online from its headquarters in Sydney, Australia. Khouri affirmed that the National Institute is following up on all precautionary measures in the field of human rights, and the organization is ready to share its expertise to ensure that the health and well-being of all would be protected. She also presented the Kingdom of Bahrain's precautionary measures to contain the pandemic and how they have affected human rights. She also discussed the rights of migrant workers and how their rights have been safeguarded in the kingdom.